Isaiah chapter 11, verse 1. There shall come forth a rod out of the stem of Jesse, and a branch shall grow out of his roots. Verse 2, here now are the seven spirits of God. The spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom, understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Let me read a couple more verses down. Uh, and shall make him of quick understanding in the fear of the Lord. He shall not judge after the sight of his eyes, nor reprove after the hearing of his ears. But with righteousness shall he judge the poor and reprove with equity for the meek of the earth. And he shall smite the earth with the rod of his mouth and with the breath of his lips shall he slay the wicked and righteousness shall be the girdle of his loins and faithfulness the girdle of his reins. Heavenly Father, I need your help to preach this message. I pray, dear God, Lord, that you would speak uh, through my voice and through what I say as we go through your word this morning. We pray, Lord, that you would bless it. Lord, you do whatever you want to do in this service. You lead whichever way you want to lead. And Father, we'll just trust you in that. Uh, we're here for you, Heavenly Father. We're here to worship you. We're here to praise your name and the name of Jesus. We're here to be uplifted and comforted by your spirit, the comforter. And Father, we just ask God that you do those things with us this morning. Bless your word, we pray in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. I got to thinking about... This message last night, and, and, I, and again, I, I wasn't sure what direction to take it, so I just put down several notes on this that we're, we're dealing with, again, the, uh, the first of the seven spirits of God, which is uh, the Spirit of the Lord. And last week, we went through some verses here uh, where it re referenced the Spirit of the Lord. Um, uh, like in Judges, Samson went down, and, and uh, the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. It gave him his strength. And the Bible says, not by might, not by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. Um, again, Judges 14, Judges 15, that's all Samson. The Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Uh, we talked about Saul. The Spirit of the Lord came upon him and turned him into another man. And also the Spirit of the Lord came upon David. And uh, the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul. We looked at that very quickly. Uh, Something I think is important to remember, 2 Samuel 23, 2, and I don't know if I read this verse, but the Spirit of the Lord spake by me, and His word was in my tongue. And I want to tell you something. If you think you've got the Holy Ghost, but you think the Holy Spirit is drawing you away from God's word, you ain't got it. You don't have it. Jesus Himself testified, the words that I speak unto you, they are spirit. And right here, the Bible's telling you, the Spirit of the Lord spake by me and His Word was in my tongue. The Word of God and the Spirit of God will always act as the same thing. They are one in everything that they are. Uh, let me move on from this. Um, let's see here. I like this, 2 Second, Second Corinthians 3, where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's liberty. Amen? If you've ever been in bondage, then you know, what, you know what it feels like when you are made free. Amen? There's no feeling in the world like the feeling of being free. Uh, amen to that. Now, um, John chapter 1, verse 32. It says, it says in Isaiah 11, the Spirit of the Lord shall... And to me, this was always interesting. It didn't say the Spirit of the Lord shall enter into him. It doesn't say that the Spirit of the Lord will take him over. It said the Spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. And when I read that, I thought of John chapter 1. It's also in Matthew, it's also in Mark, and it's also in Luke. It's in all four of the Gospels when Jesus was baptized, began his ministry. The, the, the Spirit of God came down, descended down from heaven like a dove, and it abode on him. In other words, it literally rested on him. Amen? And everywhere that Jesus was, the Spirit of God was there with him. And that's why he said, I must go. I've got to go up to heaven because Jesus in his flesh body was limited as to where he could be.
But he said, I got to go up to heaven so that the comforter can come and he can be all over the earth. Jo Joel prophesied that the spirit of the Lord was going to be poured out upon all people and your sons and daughters shall prophesy. So uh, here's where I'm going to take it this morning. I'm going to ask the question, who is the Lord? Because the spirit on this particular passage is the spirit of, uh, let me go back to it. The spirit of the, and then notice capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Now I've taught on this several times before. I've actually been doing some research into it. And uh, I'm going to share some things with you along that line. Then I'm going to move on from there. So who is the Lord? And how do we know that that is actually the name that we should be referencing our God with? There's many gods out there. and They all have different names. Some gods go by multiple names. We know that the, the, like the fertility goddesses throughout the centuries, uh, they've all been the same. It's like the same goddess, but they go through different names like Ashtaroth, Isis, Diana in the New Testament and so on. So they go by different names, but it's the same one. How do we know that our Bible's right when every time it references God's name in the Hebrew, that that should be the Lord. And I'm going to explain where I'm going with this here in just a moment. I want you to look at Revelation 19, 16. Christ is the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Amen. What is a Lord? Do what? The boss. That's not bad. Who is the Lord or what is a Lord? A ruler has authority. That means when he says jump, you don't check the union regulations to see if you're allowed to do that. When he says jump, you say how high. When he says jump, you jump. Yes, Kyle. Is what? An owner. Yep. A land lord. That means that if you own property in this country, and that's something the Constitution absolutely get, and God does. God gives man the right to own property. And I'll tell you something, the communist and socialist movement in this country is strong, and it goes all the way to the top, all the way to the White House. The first thing they want to do is rob everybody of personal, private property. They'll tell you what Obama told Joe the plumber years ago. I just think if we take your money and spread it around, it's good for everybody. No, don't take my money, amen? I work for that, that's my money. This is my land, that's my house, that's my car, that's my wife. You can't have none of them, amen? But that's what they're going to do. So uh, you're right on that, Kyle. A lord is a ruler over a land or ruler over property or ruler over, uh, I'll say this, ruler over servants. Every place of employment's got to have a manager. It's got to have a boss. Somebody has got to be in charge. Somebody has to be the final authority in that place of work. But you can't just have everybody ruling over themselves. Nobody would show up for work. It just doesn't work. So we have to have, men have to be governed. Men have to be ruled over. Sometimes that is not very wise, but men need it just the same. And what God is saying here is, I am in charge of you. I'm in charge of everybody. I'm in charge of everything. And nothing is outside my governance or authority. Somebody say amen. So when the Bible calls Jesus King of Kings and Lord of Lords, it means exactly that. There is no king higher than Christ. There is no Lord who has more power, more authority, more land than Jesus has. Somebody can say, well, you know, I've got 20,000 acres here and I've got 50,000 acres down there and I own four houses scattered across the world. Yeah, but you don't own heaven. Amen. Revelation 17, these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is Lord of lords and king of kings. There it says it again. Psalm 136, 3, oh, give thanks to the Lord of lords for his mercy endureth Forever. Deuteronomy 10, 17. For the Lord your God is a God of gods and Lord of four times in your Bible. Isn't that interesting? Four times in your Bible that God, the Christ is called the Lord 
of lords, a great God, a mighty and a terrible, which regardeth not persons nor taketh reward. That's exactly what we read in Isaiah chapter 11, is that when Christ rules and when Christ is the judge and authority over mankind, he does not care about how your face looks to him. He's not afraid that you're angry with him. He's not afraid of you. He doesn't look upon you and say, well, you're a higher status than these people over here, so I'm going to rule in your favor. That's how it's being done right now in places in this country. But that's not Christ. Amen. He's going to judge in righteousness. And if the Bible says it, he's going to judge according to the word of God. Amen. Amen. You watch out for any spirit. I say it again. Any spirit that will draw you away from this book is not the spirit of God. Amen to that. Now, check, take a look at this. I'm going to give you a little Hebrew lesson. Don't worry, it's not anything you've got to memorize. In the Old Testament, you will find thousands of times these four letters. And you read them backwards from right to left. Yod, He, Va, He. That is where we get the name Jehovah. And I believe it's the right name. So every place in the Old Testament where you find God or Lord in all capital letters, it means the translators came to those four letters, yod heh vah he, that make up God's personal name. His holy name. There's a commandment that God sent down to mankind pertaining to God's name. What was it? A commandment. Thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I'm going to show you what that means in a minute. And so, later Hebrew rabbis took these four letters. And then they added the vowels from the word Adonai. And Adonai means Lord. To get Jehovah. They took the, uh, the A or an E, the O and the A, and stuck it in between the letters Yod or Jod or J, He or H, Va or V, and He or H, Jehovah. So that's where we get that name, and that name, coincidentally, but not accidentally, is found exactly seven times in the King James Bible. Isn't that something? Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh, which means Jehovah shall be seen. Exodus 3, but by my name Jehovah was I not known to them. Exodus 17, Moses built an altar and called the name of it Jehovah Nissi, which means Jehovah is my banner or my standard. And I'll tell you something, I'm not moving, I'm not backing up, I'm not changing. The, my Bible says Jehovah, then it's Jehovah. Don't, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to talk about this other word for God called Yahweh. Have you heard of that one? Did you ever read it in the Bible? It ain't there. If it ain't there, you don't believe it. Amen? Jehovah is my standard. That's what I'm going to use. Judges 6.24, Gideon built an altar there unto the Lord and called it Jehovah Shalom. What do we say Shalom means? Peace. Jehovah is our peace. Amen. So watch this now. When the Spirit of the Lord is upon you, you will have peace. Mm. When the Spirit of the Lord is on you, God's name will be your standard. And you will, listen, you will not go around to anybody, including just in the privacy of your own house, Saying, God blank this, or God blank that, or using the name of Jesus Christ as a swear word or a curse word. Mm -mm, don't you be doing that. I'll get my mama after you. She'll take a, a bar of dial soap and dial your mouth out with it. She did. Psalm 83, 18, that men may know that thou whose name alone is Jehovah art the most high over all the earth. Isaiah 12, behold, God is my salvation. I will trust and not be afraid for the Lord Jehovah is my strength and my song. 
Isaiah 26, 4, trust ye in the Lord forever, for the Lord Jehovah is everlasting strength. I mean, look at these verses here. Talk about the seven spirits of God. And here we have Jehovah mentioned exactly seven times in the Bible. By the way, in the New King James Bible, you know how many times the name Jehovah is in the New King James? Zero. They took it out, Ron. They replaced it with uh, I don't know. I better not say anything because I don't know exactly. But they took it out. You won't find it in there. But think about what these mean. Jehovah is our peace. Uh, Jehovah is the most high over all the earth. There is no God higher than our God. Amen? And if you're a Mormon, you believe that stupid doctrine that God came from another planet somewhere and was made a God with all of his God wives and he populated a planet called earth and he's the god over this you know what that means that there is a god who is over our god and the bible says absolutely not amen so they do not have the spirit of the lord in them jehovah is our strength in my song when you're right with god and you got the spirit of god in you you'll sing amen I don't care if you can't sing you'll sing lord jehovah is my strength trust you in the lord for the lord jehovah is everlasting strength god will never let you down now there's a Bible out, a new Bible, like we needed a new Bible. It's called the Legacy Standard Bible. It is put out by John MacArthur. You ever heard him? Okay. Don't follow him. He's a liar. The New American Standard Bible people gave John MacArthur a license to change whatever he wanted to in the New American Standard Bible. So what he did was, he went to all the places in the Bible where it said capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. He took that out and replaced it with Yahweh. Now, again, I don't, I don't exactly know where this word Yahweh, how it crept in, who brought it up first, or whatever. But there is no biblical authority for it. My Bible doesn't say it. My Bible doesn't use it. It's not in here, so I don't believe it. Now, I'm, I'm dead serious on this issue. We know that Christ has an enemy, an arch enemy, that we call the Antichrist. We know that Paul said to watch out for another Jesus. We know that Christ told us, Matthew 24, for there shall be many Christs. Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ and shall deceive many. I think it is important that you know who you're singing praises to, that you know who you're praying to, that you know who is forgiving your sins or who will forgive your sins, that you know where your salvation is coming from, you better make sure you've got the right God. Amen? And when it comes to this thing called Yahweh, I don't know who that is, but I don't call him that. I used to back years ago because I learned it in Bible college. But I, don't, I don't say that no more. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. Amen. I like, I might do that song. He is Jehovah, Lord God Almighty. Who remembers that one? I like it. I used to sing that years ago. And then I found out Kenneth Copeland sang it. But here's what they did. They, I mean, MacArthur took out the word Lord. Every place, L-O-R-D in all capital letters, and he replaced it with Yahweh, including the New Testament. Now, I'm going to show you why this is wrong, okay? Deuteronomy 6.16, you should not tempt the Lord your God as you tempted him in Massah. Now, notice that you have the, let me get over here. Michael, follow me here. Notice you have the Lord in all capital letters. Again, that means that those four Hebrew letters, yod heh vah -Heh, that's what's here. 
So every time the King James translators got to that name, they said the Lord. Now, they're accused of making that up and saying that's not really God's name. That's like a title, but the Lord is not his name. Well, I beg to differ with you. In fact, I'm going to bring a witness in named Jesus Christ. And we're going to let Jesus Christ tell you what that name means. Deuteronomy 6.16, you should not tempt the Lord your God. Jesus used that very verse from the Old Testament. When he is being tempted by the devil, Jesus said unto him, It is written again, thou shalt not tempt who? Jesus said it in Greek, but he called him the Lord where this word was used. Um, the Greek word here is kyrios, and that means Lord. So every place, let me show you another one here. Every place in the Old Testament, if the Old Testament is quoted by the New Testament, when the Old Testament has this Lord in all capital letters, it's jod heh vah -Hey. And then in the New Testament, well, here it is, the New Testament. Here's the Old Testament. The Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou at my right hand. And this is about David, who is calling his son Lord. And Jesus said, he saith unto them, how then doth David in spirit call him Lord, saying, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand till I make thine enemies thy footstool. So again, Jesus himself said that this word in Hebrew is the word Lord. Jesus said so. Uh, I got another one for you. Deuteronomy 18, 15, the Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee. Moses said that. In Acts chapter 3, for Moses truly said unto the fathers, a prophet shall the Lord your God raise up unto you. Again, the New Testament is giving you the authority of why he is called the Lord. And I want to tell you something, rightfully so. When you take that Lord out of your Bible and you just replace it with this name that nobody knows what it is, nobody knows what it means, but it doesn't mean the Lord, Yahweh doesn't mean that. When you take that out, you are taking away the authority. You're taking away the Lord who rightfully has authority over every one of us. And I'll tell you something, John MacArthur. This book is not your book to change. It is not your word to alter and make it into something that your own wicked flesh wants to turn it into. This book belongs to God, copyrighted by God. Forever, O oh Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. There's a copy of this book sitting on God's coffee table up in heaven. Amen. And it's always open. Amen. And it says exactly what this book says. And God said, don't alter it. Don't change it. Don't add to and don't take away from his word. Amen. Blessed be he that I like this one. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Matthew 23, Psalm 118. Blessed is he that cometh in the name of the L-O-R-D. Now. Um, oh yeah. Now this, here's the, here's the commandment here at Exodus 20. And, uh, by the way, I, I was thinking last night about this message and I didn't know how I was going to preach it and I didn't know what I was going to say. And the thought came to my mind. If, if this sermon or any sermon that I preach is converted into a movie then I, at best, am a supporting actor in this movie. The primary actor is the Word of God. I'm only here to support this book. This book has final authority. And I know... That as long as I give the words that are in this book to all of you, I don't have to worry about 
how people are going to receive it, what people are going to say about it, how they're going to react, because that's up to God. That's not up to me. I'm just the supporting actor to the real one who is Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. This is the important thing right here. So, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. I was taught that you don't go around saying Jesus Christ unless you're praying or you're witnessing or you're reading the Bible. So many people now, there's, and I don't know if you've noticed it, there has been a change in how people curse in public. When I was young, people would use hell or damn, both of those are Bible words, in public, but the F word was not something they used a lot of. But now, and you know, I never heard my dad use the F word, never. But now... Guys can't talk except they use the F word multiple times. Women, women can't talk a complete sentence without using the F word in it in, in public. And we, we're living in a, a cursing society. It's very vulgar and it's evil. When you think about what all these words mean, many of them are, in fact, curse words. Hell is a curse. Damnation is a curse. Amen? So, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. That means you don't say, oh my God, or holy God, in a slang reference. What really gets me upset is when they say, Jesus Blanking Christ. I wish I had a bar of dial soap. No. Lava. <laughs> Scour it real good. Amen. Notice Leviticus 24 11. The Israelitish woman's son blasphemed the name of the Lord and cursed. What did he do? took God's name in vain. He cursed using God's name. And they brought him unto Moses. And his mother's name was Shelemith, the daughter of Dibri of the tribe of Dan. And they put him in ward, in other words, they put him in the jail, that the mind of the Lord might be showed them. They weren't going to act on this until they knew what God wanted to do. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Bring forth him that hath cursed without the camp. And let all that heard him lay their hands upon his head. And let all the congregation stone him. That was the punishment for saying God's name in a curse way. In verse 15, And thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel, saying, Whosoever curseth his God shall bear his sin. And he that blasphemeth the name of the Lord... He shall surely be put to death, and all the congregation shall, shall certainly stone him, as well the stranger as he that is born in the land, when he blasphemeth the name of who? The Lord. Not, Jeho not Yahweh, or not Yahuwah. The Lord shall be put to death. God is serious about this. And I want to say to you parents and grandparents, number one, you ought not be saying those words to begin with. Number two, you really should not ever use that kind of language in front of your children or your grandchildren. I was doing work on a house one time. It was up in St. Louis County. And uh, they were doing, finishing their basement. And I was there uh, going to paint the basement out and everything like that. And it was... Uh, just typical suburban couple, a man and a woman, and they had uh, like a teenage daughter, and they had, a, had a, uh, about a 10, 11-year-old son. And uh, I remember being in the stair hole of that house, you know, just doing my work, 
And that mother got mad about something that her teenage daughter did. And she cursed that daughter of hers. Blank. God blanket. Amanda. And that just went all over me. And I, Lisa, I don't know if you remember this. I come home and I told you about that. And I said, I don't ever want to get into a place where I would use that kind of language concerning my own children. I don't care how mad I am at them. Do not take God's name in a cursing way. Do not say his name wrong. Do not, do not use his name. And let me tell you about using his name in vain. Deuteronomy 32 says, I will publish the name of the Lord. Ascribe ye greatness unto our God. Now I want to tell you something. The King James Bible is not the first Bible that showed up that uses the word, the Lord, as God's personal name. The Tyndale Bible had it. Wycliffe's Bible had it. The Latin Vulgate. The, um, the, um, the Old Testament that was translated into Greek. 200, 300 years before Christ ever came, every place where they found that the word yod he bah there, they put Kyrios there in Greek, Jerry. That means those Hebrew rabbis, they knew what God's name was. God's name is the Lord. We're not going to change it. Amen. We're not going to change it. So 1 Samuel 17, look at here. David uh, then said, David to the Philistine, thou comest to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield. But I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. I want to tell you something. David was operating under the power and authority of God himself. He's telling Goliath, you come after me with that big old spear. You got that big old sword. You got this big helmet on. You got all that armor on you. You come to me that way, well, look at me. I ain't got no sword. I don't have a spear. I don't have no armor on. I ain't got nothing but a sling and a stone. But I'm fixing to take your head off. I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts, whom you have, you've defied them. 1 Kings 18, 24, and call you on the name of your gods. And I will call on the name of the Lord. And the God that answered by fire, let him be God. And all the people answered and said, it is well spoken i just i don't know i don't know that i can prove it but i'm just of the opinion that this other word yahweh might very well be the name of a different god now i want you to think of the ramifications of that if what i said is true where this legacy standard Bible that John MacArthur has put out, they've taken God's personal name, the Lord, completely out of it, and everywhere they've put Yahweh. So who are they praying to? Whose name are they praying in? Whose authority are they praying with when they say the word Yahweh? Psalm 20, verse 7, some trust in chariots, some in horses. But we will remember the name of the Lord our God. You know, I, I'm of the opinion that if our nation would turn back to the Lord and put God first in our country, we wouldn't have to spend a hundred billion dollars in national defense. God would make every nation in the world scared to death to come against us. For David's sake, nobody invaded Israel under Solomon's reign. Why? They had too much fear. They said, we're not touching them. Those are God's people. That's David's son on the throne. We're not going against them. There was power in the name of the Lord our God. Somebody say amen. amen. Psalm 102. So the heathen shall fear the name of the Lord and all the kings of the earth thy glory. Psalm 116. I love, look, notice how many times the word Lord is in this little, little, little clip of the word. I love the Lord. 
because he hath heard my voice and my supplications. When you have the Spirit of the Lord in you, when you pray, you just know God's hearing your prayer. And there's just very little, if any, doubt in your mind at all. Because he hath inclined his ear unto me, and therefore will I call upon him as long as I live. The sorrows of death compassed me, and the pains of hell got hold upon me. I found trouble and sorrow. Then called I upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. The Lord preserveth the simple. I was brought low, and he helped me. No matter what you're struggling with, no matter what you're dealing with, no matter what hard times you're going through, call on the name of the Lord. Call on the name of the Lord. Psalm 124, our help is in the name of the Lord who made heaven and earth. Psalm 148, let them praise the name of the Lord for his name, is, his name alone is excellent. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Listen, there is no higher name than the Lord. In fact, in, at least in this country and in most English-speaking nations, when you say, the Lord helped me, everybody knows you're talking about the one God. God's name is his reputation. God is, amen, thank you, Roy. God is known by his name and that his name is trustworthy and you just know to expect good and right things in the name of the Lord. Proverbs 18.10, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous runneth into it and is safe. Maybe you are being chased by devils. Maybe devils are pounding at your heart, trying to get you to turn away from God, turn back into sin. Maybe you're in fear of your own life, either by the hand of somebody else or possibly by your own hand. Call upon the name of the Lord. When you run to the Lord, you'll be safe. Isaiah 50, who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walk? Notice this. Right here in this, in this verse, Isaiah 50, 10. Who, among you, who, is, who is among you that feareth the Lord, that obeyeth the voice of his servant, that walketh in darkness and hath no light? Let him trust in the name of of the Lord and stay upon his God. Right here, that verse is telling you that God is the Lord and the Lord is God. They're not separate. Also, Isaiah 56, the sons of the stranger that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servants. Everyone that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and taketh hold of my covenant. When you make a covenant with the Lord, God honors that because that's his authority. He is Lord. Joel 2. I like this one. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be delivered. Acts 2.21 is quoting that. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans 10.13. My goodness, it's part of the Romans road of salvation. Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Not Yahweh. Not Yahuwah, the sacred name people. They say you got to say his name right. That's why I told you when I showed you them Hebrew letters, I told you, you don't have to remember these. You can forget all about it. And some, most of you will. You forget all about it. His name is the Lord. You already see the, the simplest of people who are called by the name of the Lord. They know this. It's the Bible scholars that are wrecking it for everybody. Watch out for these people. You think, you think John MacArthur is just doing this out of the goodness of his heart and he's not getting any money out of it at all? Pfft. 
Isaiah 26, 13, O Lord our God, other, watch this now, other lords beside thee have had dominion over us. Think about that for a minute. The word Baal, it means Lord to the Canaanite people, the Hivite people, and so on. We know that Baal is the enemy of God. We know that Baal is the one that the Israelites always turn to. So remember what I said a while ago. We, we, we follow Christ, but his enemy is Antichrist. We follow Jesus, but there is another Jesus. We follow um, uh, what, what uh, is in Matthew chapter 24. I can't remember that now, but anyway, that's, that's uh, what, what he said. Many shall come in my name saying, I am Christ. We follow Christ, but there are other Christs who claim to have the anointing of God. Baal was the opposite of God, and the Israelites often turned to him. The name Beelzebub is a derivative of Baal. Uh, the word Beelzebub means Lord of the Flies. And um, any place you see the name Bel, that basically is Baal. Um, other lords that ruled over you will include Satan. He's a principality. He's the prince of, the, of darkness. He's the prince of this world. He's the prince of the power of the air. There was a time when other lords had dominion over you. It may be today in your life that other lords have dominion over you, but not Jesus. Devil spirits having dominion over people. Uh, Ephesians 2, the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children disobedience. Principalities and powers. Other lords including cruel governing authority. When, when evil takes hold of a land or a nation, the Bible says many are the princes thereof. And we're sort of in that now, but it's not as bad as it could be, not as bad probably as it's going to be. We're going to live in a country where it will mean five to ten years in prison for misgendering somebody. I'm not, I'm not playing that game. Okay? I'm not playing it. You're either a man or you're a woman. Amen. That's how Genesis writes it. Male and female created he them. He did not create 40 different genders. That's stupid. Cruel governing authority. Or... I have cl clergy rulers, Nicolaitans. What are the Nicolaitans? Does anybody know? They are, the, when Jesus in the book of Revelation spoke out against, number one, the deeds of the Nicolaitans and the doctrine of the Nicolaitans. The laitan part is the laity, the people in the pews. Nico means to conquer. Conquer them. So you have, in, in the Catholic Church, who's in charge? The priest and the Pope is in charge of that. You serve them. Uh, John Wycliffe, there was a, a, a thing wrote about him that he was arguing with another priest about papal authority and about the Bible. And this other priest said, I would much rather follow the rules and laws of the Pope than the laws of God. That's what he said. And John Wycliffe said, I hope I live long enough to see the day that the boy who uh, pulls the plow knows more about the Word of God than you do. 
And that happened because he translated the Bible in English. Amen. Whenever you have other lords over you, you, and it's not just in the Catholic Church. It's any church or any religious system where you put a man or a woman in charge of your life. And that person tells you how to live. They tell you how to eat. They tell you how to dress. They tell you who you can be with, who you can't be with, and on and on and on. And there are cults like that all over the world. And people are in bondage. If they would live to the Lord, God would put them under His authority. That's what He said. Our Lord, our God, other lords beside Thee have had dominion over us. But by Thee only will we make mention of Thy name. And His name is the Lord. I'm going to ask you this morning. Who's in charge of your life? What lords are you following right now? Is it old habits? Um, if you haven't watched Thursday's Pastor Mike online, I encourage you to do it. We have a family, follows our ministry for years. Their adult son, it's been discovered by his own daughter that there are illegal things on his computer. And this man's daughter said to her grandparents, I don't feel safe at home, so she moved in with her grandparents. They've got her in school. They called me to tell me what was going on. And we all agreed that the best thing to do is he's got to stop doing what he's doing. So they called local law enforcement to report to them what their own son's doing. That's not easy to do. It is not easy to do. But sometimes it's necessary. God has a simple rule in the Bible. If you will not place yourself under God's authority, He will put you under cruel authority. And you know, I was reading the YouTube comments of that video last night and there's comments on there where people are saying that it's a constant battle with them struggling with legal versus illegal images it's a very 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 disturbing trend in our nation and it's taking over that's cruel authority people many lords other lords will have dominion over you you need to be made free let's bow our heads